Hello everyone, I'm Greg Weaver. Welcome to The Audio Analyst. If you've followed my written work over the decades or the channel since its inception, you will be well aware that I am a strong proponent of the LP format and the advantages that format offers. To that end, today I want to share with you one of the most effective and remarkable LP accessories I have ever tried, the $6,000 DS Audio's ES001, an eccentricity detection stabilizer tool. First of all, what do we mean by eccentricity? With our LPs, eccentricity describes any departure from the desired perfectly circular orbital path taken by the record grooves as the LP rotates on the turntable platter. If there is any deviation from that perfectly circular rotational path, those aberrations are measured as eccentricity. Essentially, if the record isn't perfectly centered as it rotates on our turntable platter, in the geometric sense, those departures cause an irregular path for the stylus, one that is fundamentally elliptical rather than perfectly circular. The Recording Industry Association of America, or the RIAA, has established that the standard center hole diameter for 33 and 78 RPM records should be 0.286 inches, or roughly 7.265 millimeters, and should not vary by more than 0.2 millimeters. The standard for the turntable spindle diameter is established as between 7.05 and 7.15 millimeters. I'm sure you can understand. Hi, baby. Hi, sweetie. Hi. I'm sure you can understand that even under absolutely perfect manufacturing conditions for both the LP and the turntable, that may still leave a gap of as much as 0.26 millimeters, a quarter of a millimeter, of play between the spindle and the record's spindle hole. Under real-world conditions, with LP stamping variances, turntable spindle variances, and wear of both over time, DS Audio postulates that the eccentricity width of the average LP may reach as much as 0.34 millimeter, or some 340 microns, of slop or play by the record around the spindle. With such deviances, DS Audio has calculated that we may realize something on the order of 0.15% weighted RMS while in flutter on the innermost grooves of the record's playing surface, even if the turntable in use has zero native while in flutter. In the real world, even if we assume an average speed error value of the highest quality turntables to be around 0.008%, DS Audio suggests that when all these factors are combined, we may be facing an overall excessive wow and flutter value some 20 times worse than that of the turntable itself. So what does all that mean, and why does having your LP as accurately centered as possible when rotating so important? Well, for starters, it means that the LPs, when not perfectly centered on the turntable, will be subject to routine micro shifts in pitch based on the slight speed variations the resultant elliptical path generates. Further, the stylus and its cantilever assembly will be subjected to undesirable lateral centrifugal forces twice every rotation. I'm sure we've all seen a tone arm wobble back and forth when playing some records ever so slightly twice a rotation. In such circumstances, each time that stylus gets to either extreme while tracing its elliptical path, besides its alternately tracking slightly faster on one half of the cycle than slowing down on the other, there is also the undesirable and detrimental forces exhibited upon it to first stop its lateral movement in that first direction, and then to change that angular momentum to commence its travel moving the other direction laterally, during each half of its cycle. Repeat that at the opposite extreme, and you can understand that this happens twice per rotation. 
Such extreme, sonic damaging, and undesirable motion is not only a clear indicator that the record is not perfectly centered, but is in fact a cause of distortion that many digifiles point to as one of the issues that they have with listening to vinyl. Some people are much more sensitive to such micro speed and pitch variations than others. You may have an audio buddy or two who say they just prefer the more correct timing, the more stable tonality and pitch definition that they hear from an optical disc, file playback, or streaming. Well, we now have this remarkable instrument from DS Audio, invented by the same team that has developed the remarkable DS Audio optical cartridges to provide a solution to this otherwise insurmountable problem. Incidentally, the DS Audio Grandmaster optical cartridge with its two box equalization system will be arriving here for my examination next week, so keep an eye out for that. But the ES001 eccentricity detection device is a precision optical instrument built in the style of a relatively large cylindrical two part record clamp that is two and three quarters inches tall by three and an eighth inches in diameter. The top two and a half inch section houses two sets of infrared light emitting diodes and two matching position sensing detectors arranged at an intersecting angle of 90 degrees. These PSDs are optoelectric position sensors that provide continuous position data with both high position resolution and high speed response. The top plate of the ES001 features a 2 inch by 1.5 inch touch screen display panel. The power button is very near its bottom between the two sets of LEDs and sensors and there is a rear mounted Allen screw 180 degrees opposite to the power switch to remove the cover when replacing batteries or updating software via the supplied USB cable. It also gives us a good look at the guts of this sophisticated measurement tool. To use it, once you've placed the record you want to play on your turntable, you place the ES001 over the record on the spindle like any record clamp. You turn on the table's motor, and once the platter is spinning, you grab and hold the top section of the unit. Now, with it sitting on top of the record, as you hold the top section steady, the lower section is free to spin. Touch the front power button, and the LEDs and sensors power on, and the display asks you to touch it to start the process. Once the measurement process is engaged, each of the two sets of sensors detects the position change of the runout groove at the innermost circumference of the record. As the record spins, the eccentricity of the record is then calculated from the information collected by these sensors to establish the difference between the current rotational center and the absolute center position of the turntable spindle center. This information is then presented on the ES001's display using multiple graphs. Once you have the measurement, you stop the turntable's rotation. With the platter stopped, you follow the crosshair prompts on the display to manually reposition the record to the absolute center. The display includes a live moving crosshair showing the absolute center as you hone in on its perfect center location. Once centered, the display also shows both states both before and after the correction. Typically, the tolerances of the record spindle hole will allow an accurate absolute repositioning. However, every once in a while you come across a record whose hole is just far enough off from perfect that you might have to ream it to get it back to absolute center. But have no fear, a precision all tool is included with the ES001 if small adjustments to the LP spindle hole are required. And I hear some of you groaning, no way I'd ream my record spindle hole. Well, I would only add that if it can't be repositioned as it is perfectly centered, the record's defective to begin with. So fixing that problem only makes sense. So how does all of this look as you use the ES001? I've prepared a bird's eye view of the detection and repositioning process. Let's take a look. First, we place the record over the spindle 
and you can see the amount of play that is often there. Next we put the clamp on top and we start the record to spin. We grab and hold the top part of the ES001 and turn it on with the switch on the front and you can see it's asking us to tap to start to measure. We do that and very quickly it has the measurements and you can see that red crosshair spinning around that's pretty far off. Um, stop the record, physically move that crosshair so that it's dead centered and you can see we're just about perfect here and turn it off and we're all done. Okay now let's see how it sounds. I'm going to play the same two minutes or so of Cat People Putting Out Fire by David Bowie and Giorgio Miroder. Have a listen. You 
you can see how easy it is to use, especially after you've gotten the hang of it. And once you've heard the difference it can make, you won't likely choose to listen to another LP without using it. I know I cannot. Those otherwise immutable micro shifts in speed that reveal themselves as pitch variations, abnormal timbre, and timing issues that can smear pace, rhythmic continuity, and general timekeeping of the music are vastly diminished. Attributes like the focus of voices, as well as of staging and imaging cues, even the sense of the air and space around and between instruments, are recreated with a new and heightened degree of resolution and conciseness that is utterly enchanting. I realize this instrument will not be for everyone. With its retail price of $6,000, it represents a commitment that many may be unwilling or unable to make. But for those of you as dedicated to your LP playback systems as me, it should be considered a necessary, not an accessory. I don't know anyone who has one who does not use it every play now. It is that good. As always, thanks for taking the time to drop by today. Further information on supporting the channel may be found in today's description section or at my website, theaudioanalyst.com. Please stay safe and keep the music playing. Till next time, cheers. <laughs>